Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of uh, videos on C programming. I'm going to be writing a tic-tac-toe simulator uh, where the computer plays tic-tac-toe against itself. Um, I've written tic-tac-toe programs in a few different languages just as a way to practice and learn and I haven't done one in C before so I thought maybe I'd give that a shot and turn it into a little tutorial series. Um, this first one is just going to be kind of on the the environment I'm using. Um, if you're already a practice C programmer, you probably won't need to watch this one, but it, it's going to be short, and you probably aren't watching this anyway if you're a practice C programmer. But anyway, um, what I'm looking at here in front of me is Emacs, which is my text editor, what I'm going to be writing this in and doing most of the work in. Um, my system that I'm using is FreeBSD. Um, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's a Unix, Linux type operating system. Um, it's what I run on my desktop. I happen to think it's a good development system. And then my window manager is i3, which is a tiling window manager. So my windows are always full. Um, usually there's one window that's expanded for the whole screen. Um, sometimes there might be a couple of them you know, split screen, but basically all the, all the screen real estate is always being used. And then I'm going to be using other tools like CC and Make, um, which are available on most, well, available on everything, but they're usually either installed or easy to install on any Unix type system. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the layout I'm looking at here. Um, this file I've got up is just a little outline of what's going to be in this lesson. So, um, if I switch switch windows here, all I've got so far is um, a directory I created called tttbot, and then I've got a tttbot.org file in it, which is that file I was just looking at in Emacs. Um, and then the other ones you're seeing there are um, backup autosave files. Not very important. So the first thing I normally do when I'm starting something like this is I go ahead and check the project, start a Git repository for the project. Um, Git, if you're not familiar with Git, it's pretty great for any sort of development because you check in changes as you go and then you can always roll back. You can see a log of your progress, changes you've made, all that good stuff. So, And it also makes it easy to distribute the project to other people. So first thing I'm going to do is get in it which starts the repository and so now I have a dot git directory here I'm gonna copy a basic git ignore file that I have in here if I look at that it's just some some basic types of files that I don't want to, to bother saving in the repository you've got um, now let me switch over to the Emacs window here got anything ending with a tilde that's just a backup file a dot out is a file the compiler creates sometimes um, sometimes I'll have log files dot o files dot core files auto save emacs is auto save files I don't I don't want to fill up my repository with that junk so the git ignore file has it ignore that stuff um, now that I've got git initiated I can run magic the Magit, um, I don't know how that's pronounced, Magit, Magit, I don't know. It's an Emacs interface to Git, which I use to do some basic stuff. And what it gives you is this sort of an interface where it'll say, okay, these two files are currently untracked. So my git ignore file and my tttbot.org file are both untracked. So I can say, yes, please stage them, commit them. And then I give a little note. And now they're committed. So it's a, it's a lot like using Git from the command line. It's just you can do it from within Emacs. It's a little, a little simpler. It um, doesn't really make any difference. You, I could do it done the same thing here with Git add and Git commit. Um, mag, magit, Magit, whatever. Just gives you a, an a nice interface. So now if I do a Git log in a terminal, um, I can see my commit. Now, 
switch back to my outline. So I've made the directory, I've got this file in it, I've done the git, the git init and the git ignore. Now, if I want to be able to share this project with others, which I'm sure everyone will be fascinated by it, I can go to GitLab, which is where I have some Git repositories, create a new project. I switched to GitLab a couple years ago when GitHub started censoring people for silly reasons. And so far, I don't think GitLab has been too bad about that. So I'm going to create a project. Um, I can make it public. I'll just leave it private for now because I don't know how soon there will really be anything in it worth seeing. And that's going to give me some some commands here. Now, since I already have an existing Git repository, all I need to do is run these commands down here. So, if I want to change change the origin, oh. I don't do this very often. all. Yeah, it's going to push that off to my GitLab repository. And then I can come in here and go to that repository. And you see my git ignore and my ttp ttt bot file there. So now as I work on this, I can push it now and then and it'll be out there for people to see. Well, it will be once I make it public anyway. All right, so back to here. So I've got it set up at GitLab now. Like I said, I'm using Emacs and Maggot to do all that stuff. Now there are a few things you'll usually want in a project directory. You want a README and a license file. So let's make a README. This is going to be really simple at first. Um, license file, I'm going to grab one that I've used for something else. And save that. This is just a just basically a license that says do whatever you want with this as long as you give me credit. I think that's what this license is, the ISC. Yeah, you just have to leave the copyright notice in, which I don't even really care for that. I just I could just make it public domain, but anyway, that's a, a basic license. It doesn't have to. Be, you'll see licenses that are hundreds of lines long. You really don't need anything that fancy, probably for anything like this. So now, if I go back down here to Maggot and load it, you see I've got two new untracked files. So I can stage them by hitting S, commit. If I go back to my terminal, get push again, go back to GitLab and reload this page, yep, there's my two new files. So pretty nice the way everything, and I could, I could even automate this, um, and that's something I could add to my make file when I get to that point. I could automate it so that uh, it automatically does, these, does the git push when I build it. That's something I can show in a second here. So back to the .org file. Let's go ahead and start the program and just get, we'll, leave, we'll put a comment at the top. Oops. <laughs> show off my 
incredible C skills there. Okay, this is just this is just going to be a placeholder basically. We've got a main function. something to compile. Now when I go to compile what I could do is just compile it like this and say okay bot and I'll have a sitting closer to the keyboard than I usually do so I can reach my microphone. Making it hard to type. Okay and then I can run it. There it says I am TTT bot. Great. But it gets a little old to have to go to your terminal all the time and, and type that out, especially as the compile gets more complicated. So what I usually do pretty quickly is start a make file. You know, make files you can use for all sorts of things. What we're going to use this one for is just some basic stuff. So I'm going to set up some values here. My compiler is going to be CC. If you're on Linux, you might use GCC, unless CC is linked to that. Um, but on FreeBSD, it's going to be CLang. Um, although I think I do have GCC installed, but I, I just use CLang by default for most things. I'm going to grab some C flags out of another project here. Okay, so I don't need the include here, but basically these are some flags for the compiler. Uh, the dash G will put in debugging symbols, and the other stuff just gives me loads of warnings. So I'll have that. Now we need a target. The all target will come first here, and the all target will compile the TTT bot program or the TTT bot target. And we add that as a target, and that is going to compile and for now we'll just do the um, dot o method this is going to start out I mean using a make file at all is kind of overkill at this stage but that's okay I have a clean target which is going to remove <clears throat> just remove the executable an install target which um, will install it uh, with a mode of 755. Um, and it's going to install it. Let's give it, let's put it in home bin. Okay, and this needs to do that. All right. So there's my make file. Like I said, that's about four times more complicated than it really needs to be at this stage, but that way it can grow as I work on the project. Um, and then the nice thing about that is now I can come in here and compile, and I get I can do my compiling from within Emacs now just by running a make. install then it's going to do that too so if I go out here see it's installed it into um, my home directory slash bin so now I can run it so because now it's installed in my path so I've already gotten to the point where I'm compiling the program installing the program I'm doing most of this from within Emacs so I don't have to come out to the terminal a whole lot but I can also do that stuff here I can do a make clean then make it, make install, all that same good stuff. I can do it at the terminal if I want to. Okay, let's see, back to the .org file. Okay, I think that's most of what I was going to cover in this, in this first lesson. 
um, just basic, just some basic setup stuff to get a new project going. And from now on, it'll mostly be um, editing the .c file, you know, creating an include file to go with it, all that kind of good stuff. But this is just some basics to get to get set up, to get the repository going. Um, in fact, let me take one more look at that. Oh, we've got a new. Okay, we've got new things to add to the repository. I don't really want to add my executable because that is going to change, and that you know, I want to, I want the source in the repository, but I don't need the executable in the repository because the executable will only work on a machine it was compiled for. So I'm going to ignore that, and that'll put that in my git ignore file. And so now I've got three changes to to make. So commit that. Alright, so I have a committed project. I can push it. And it should all be showing up now at my repository on GitLab. Alright, so that's you know basically 15 minutes um, to set up a new project, which would probably take five if I wasn't talking through it the whole way. Um, and now I'm ready to actually get down to coding. So hope that helped um, show some of the basics to get started, and I'll be back with a lesson two where I start putting together the program. Thanks for watching.